In this video, I explain liquid metal cool reactor. So from the word, what we understand? We understand that the liquid metal is used as a coolant. Means liquid metal is absorb the heat produced in the reactors. Okay, and this heated liquid metal is used for the further applications in the nuclear power plants. Sodium graphite reactor is one of the typical liquid metal reactors. Okay, means sodium is used as a coolant and the graphite is used as a moderator is the one of the typical liquid metal reactors. Okay, so as a liquid means as a coolant we use the sodium and as a moderator we use the graphite. In this reactor, sodium work as a coolant and the graphite is work as a moderator while the Fuel use is the little enriched uranium, means enriched uranium is used as a fuel. The common metal which can be used as a coolant are sodium and potassium. Okay, so majority sodiums are used according to first sentence. Okay, and some places the potassium is also used. Sodium boils at 880 degrees centigrade under atmospheric pressure and freezes at 95 degrees centigrade, means we can. Put the sodium at the atmosphere pressures, the boils at 880 degrees centigrade and the freeze at the 95 degrees centigrade. Hence, sodium is first melted by the electric heating system and be pressurized to about 7 bar. So, here you see these pumps are there, okay, that is a liquid sodium pumps, okay. So, before putting these sodiums into this system or in this primary circuit, we need to melt the sodiums in electric heating systems. Then after this liquid sodium is supplied to this reactor by using this liquid sodium pump. The liquid sodium is then circulated by the circulating pump that we already discussed means the sodium is first melt in electric heating systems. Then after it is supplied in the pump and from the pump it is supplied into these reactors. So, arrangement of component of metal cool reactor is shown in this figure. So, here you see this is a diagram. Means here there is a three parts are there. Primary circuit, secondary circuits and this is the final circuit that is a steam generation are there. The reactor will have two coolant circuit or a loop. Okay. So, here you see the one is the primary heat exchanger. This is a secondary heat exchanger. So, in the primary circuit, the heat is absorbed by liquid sodium in the reactors okay means as a coolant we use the liquid sodium it is supplied in these reactors and in this reactor there is a fission chain reactions are going on and due to fission chain reaction heat energy is produced and this produce heat energy due to the chain reaction is absorbed by these liquid sodiums okay and these liquid sodiums become radioactive while it is passes through the core and react chemically with the waters Okay, then after this heated liquid sodium is supplied in primary heat exchangers. Okay, so in this one pipe that is a liquid sodium is passed and from these other pipes that is a sodium potassium are passed. Okay, so this liquid sodium is supply its heat energy to the sodium potassium. Okay, and then after this heated sodium potassium is supplied in the secondary heat exchangers. In this secondary heat exchanger, the sodium potassium is supply heat energy to the feed water. And this feed water is converted into the steam. Then after this steam is supplied in the steam turbine. In a steam turbine, this energy of the steam is converted into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy is supplied to this generator. And generator converts this mechanical energy into the electrical energy. Then after exhaust steam coming out from the turbine is supplied in condensers. Condenser means it is condensation process is carried out means steam is converted into the water. This water is supplied to the pump and then after it is again supplied to the secondary heat exchanger. This way the complete cycle is continuous. Therefore, the heat absorbed by the sodium is transferred to the secondary coolant. Means this thing we already discussed. Okay. That is a heat absorbed by the sodium is supplied to the secondary coolant. Secondary coolant is the sodium potassium. Okay. And this process is carried out in primary heat exchangers. Then 
this heat absorbed by the sodium potassium is supplied to the secondary heat exchangers okay so it means sodium potassium supplies its heat energy to the water water is converted into the steam and this steam is coming out in the state of the superheated steam okay and this steam is supplied to the steam turbines and this steam turbines the mechanical energy is produced mechanical energy is supplied to the generators and then after the condensation process is carried out then it is supplied in the water feed water pump and then secondary heat exchangers the reactor vessel primary circuit and primary heat exchanger have to be shielded from radiation okay so here that is a nuclear are there means fuels are there so it is a radioactive materials are there and this coolant is passed from the reactor so these sodiums are also radioactive okay so we need to provide these shieldings to these primary circuits the liquid metal is to be handled under the cover of an inert gas such as a helium to prevent the contact with the air while the charging or draining the primary or a secondary circuit means when we charge this liquid metal in a primary circuits or a secondary circuits when we remove these liquid sodiums from the primary and the secondary circuit at that time we need to cover these liquid metals by the inert gas such as a helium to avoid to come in the contact with the air before moving ahead i request to like the video and subscribe my channels for watching the more video related to power plant engineering and other subject of this mechanical engineering for power plant engineering various link is provided in descriptions as well as in card for other subject i request to visit the playlist now next topic is the advantages of liquid metal reactors first advantage high temperature can be achieved in the cycle and that means high thermal efficiency so in this cycle we are able to achieve high temperatures and if we achieve the high temperatures then it's called as the high thermal efficiency the sodium as a coolant did not be pressurized third advantage the reactor size comparatively small means with respect to the other reactor the size of the liquid metal reactors are small the low cost graphite moderator can be used so as a moderator we use the graphite and the cost of the graphite is low as it can retain its mechanical strength and purity at the high temperature means graphite are able to sustain its mechanical strength and the purity at the high temperatures superheating of steam is possible okay so when i explain the working we mention that the superheated steam is coming out okay so in other reactor we are not mention that the superheated steam is coming out okay so how we are able to achieve the superheated steam because the temperature of the coolant is very high compared to this other reactor that's why we are able to achieve the superheated steam in these reactors next topic is the disadvantages of liquid metal cool reactors first it disadvantage sodium react violently with water and actively with air intermediate heat exchanger is necessary to separate radioactive sodium from a water so in the working you can see that is a two heat exchanger are there one is the primary and one is the secondary so this intermediate heat exchanger is required to avoid the radioactive of the water it is necessary to seal the primary and the secondary cooling system with the concrete block as sodium become highly radioactive so okay means we need to provide shielding to both primary as well as the secondary cooling systems the leak of sodium is very dangerous compared to other coolant as it comes out of reactor in highly radioactive state so thank you for watching this video if you learn something like the video subscribe my channels and share with your friends